What's up, shelf addicts? Welcome back to the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Today on Book Chat, we are concluding our end of year wrap ups with our thriller and mystery buddy read titles. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara, and welcome back to the podcast. If you're new here, we feed your shelf addiction with fun book conversations, bookish topics, and more. It's like listening in on your favorite book club. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, or on the book club's app. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's show. You can always find me and Classy on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe before you leave. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows, special episodes, and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. As always with Book Chats, we talk spoilers here, so you've been warned. Without further ado, let's begin. Today we are going to do the best and worst of 2022 Buddy Reads. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green from the Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Hello, Tamara. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey. So it's the end of the year, so it's that time. We're going to do the thing. <laughs> Can't believe 2022 is, like, coming to a close. I know. This year was, like, so fast. It just sped by. And yeah, here we are. Here we are. All right. So before we get going, I want to take a moment to welcome a new Patreon member. So welcome to Samaniqua. Thanks so much for joining and appreciate you for being here and being a certified book addict. I appreciate you. Welcome, Samaniqua. All right. Yes. Even though I apologize, I think I said it wrong. I tried and tried. I practiced. Please. Forgive me. Charge it to my brain, not my heart. (laughs) All right. So where should we begin? Should we start with the best? Should we give a best shout out first? No, let's do a build up. I'm like, I'm feeling a I'm feeling a build up here. Okay, so we're gonna do let's reverse it. Okay, we're gonna start with our worst reads of the year. I think I have a couple. Do you have a couple in that category or do you just have one? (laughs) One. Okay, I'm sorry. Did I say it like that? <laughs> you did. You did. Come on. Now. This was not like, yeah, I have more than one. This was okay. this was a fair to midly reading year, as the old folks say. Fair to midly. I know. It was like, meh. It was an okay year, but you. I feel like 2021 was a really good reading year. And this was a overall a big disappointment compared to last year. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I have a, I have a, and the thing is, is that some of the, my, some of the books that I picked crossed over. I don't know if yours did too. And I was just like, Ooh, which one do I put in? Can I, so I won't uh, say like they crossed over yet, but they crossed over. Well, I have one book that falls in two of our categories. Okay. Because Ooh. it's just the fact. So it gets a double whammy, unfortunately. I can't uh, wait to see. I bet it's the same, same book. Same book. I, have, I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So where All are right. we starting? Yes, let's do it. Uh, our worst read of 2022. Classy, you begin. I'm going to go with, for me, mm-hmm. The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McDan. Okay. Yeah, that one was a tough one for me because... It was just just so much in in the book and some of it. And granted, I mean, it was it's sci fi. It was well, no, I thought it it was it was labeled genre bending or genre defying or something. Yes. <laughs> um, and I was like, this I call bullshit on this because at first it was supposed to be horror sci fi. Um, there were some pieces that were just kind of over the top mm-hmm. and. Um, and great, and we did it for October, so we were trying something different, horror. But yeah, there were we just were going a few for a horror spin. 
Yeah. And it it was just, a, you know, and I tried and I tried. And after talking with you, I was like, oh, maybe. And then after I sat with it a little bit, I still wind up at at that too for me because just something wasn't resonating with me with that book. Okay. And yeah, I, it just, I get it. It was yeah. a difficult book, to be honest. Uh, it took a long time for me to get into the vibe of it. Mm-hmm. And once I did, I did like it, but not to the point where I feel like I want to run out and grab more material by Jennifer McMahon. I don't feel like that. I feel I can see exactly why this rated low for you. I'll just say that, you yeah. know, I get it. And I've read, I think I read Winter People by her. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when I started like getting back into my reading again, I was like, oh, okay, I could kind of see. And, you know, as you're, you get older and as you read more things, your style and the things that you begin to pick up on that really, you know, because like when you start reading at the beginning, it's like, oh, this is nice. Everything's beautiful. Rainbows yes. and unicorns. And this is just fun. And then the more you read and the more you start understanding prose and and techniques and all that, you're just like, nah. Yeah. Mm-mm. And I think this is kind of what happened with me and Jennifer. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I could see that, you know. Yeah. And what you like might have liked, you know, a couple of years ago does not mean that's what you would like now. I mean, just from, like you said, reading so many books and just getting a good variety of books. And the more you read, the more your tastes change. And I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So for me, my worst read of the year was Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I really had high hopes and I was really thrown by the fact that the ratings for this were so high I feel like was I reading the same book as these people who have rated it I don't know yeah but I think yeah I felt the same way because I was like okay are these just those super fans which I mean like I said I'm a super fan and there are some books that I have that they can't do no wrong I mean they can but they can't but then you think how many people got the, the arc? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many people mm-hmm. got the net galley? The idol wise jumped on it immediately and was just right. like, we love this. But it's yeah, it's great. No. And I mean, the story itself wasn't bad. Uh, you know, we went back and forth in 25 years earlier and now, and um, I think it was 25 years ish or something like that. And it was a you big know, timeline. Yeah, through uh, name changes and. You know, it just, I think some, I really have a big hang up when people mislabel books. Don't tell me that something is a thriller and it's not. Like, I don't think this book was a thriller. I think that is something that we kind of pinpoint to that. No, no, Mm -hmm. this is not a thriller. I'm not even sure what we Mm -hmm. thought it was. I think I said maybe a domestic drama or something i don't exactly. know because it wasn't a missed well it was kind of mm-hmm. but all the little mystery components yeah. were easy to guess yeah well. they were and you know and some of the things some of the techniques they use were not were not done well you know because mm-hmm. everybody's jumping on the podcast um bandwagon yeah and it's not always done right, especially when it's just in passing. Oh, yeah, I do a podcast. Yeah. Just like, for the. I just picked for the worst. She did a great job with podcasting. Mm-hmm. You know, she had the equipment. She had, you know, everything that like if you're a podcaster, you resonated with what she was talking about. Right. This it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm a podcaster. But it's like, OK, so when are we going to hear about your podcast? When are you going to talk about this podcast? You know, like, I think all it was mentioned was he was a podcaster and he was interviewing somebody. I think that was the gist yeah. of it. It was a, used as a plot device so that he would have an excuse to interview her mother. Yeah. And it was poorly done. Yeah. And she, he never actually interviewed the woman. I mean, he met her one time and he was very judgmental when he went in there. It wasn't really for the podcast at that point, but no. that's a whole no, no, that's not. Right. We're gonna, do we want to go back into that? No, we don't. No, because that's why it's on the worst list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's why it's there on her list. Yeah. So, whew. 
Yeah, so that was my two star. And actually, surprisingly, I did not have like a bunch of two stars. I think I had more three stars than anything mm-hmm. this year. So, okay. Yeah, she, it, it was. I can't remember what I rated it. It might have been a two or a three, but yeah, she she was pretty low on my list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so do you have another worst you'd like to share? Which, what was my other worst? Oh, I do have one more worst that's a two star. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh. Oh, my God. Yep, I do. And I bet it's the same one. The Replacement Wife. Yes. Yep. By Darby Kane. Yeah. <sighs> and I have to say, we really enjoyed the first book we read by her. So I was disappointed and I'm scared. I'm scared because <laughs> we're, taking you, a we're taking another chance on her very early in the year next year. <laughs> mm hmm. So I promise you, if this is another strike, I'm done with her. If I, if this third book is a strikeout, I'm done. So we'll see. Anyway, class, you let us, let us share why you did not. And like we it. tried her because you know what? Let's let's just go there with trying people again because we tried Mr. Riley Sager, but two mm-hmm. or three times. Yeah, too yeah, many. So, yeah, so we were like, okay, let's try Darby. We gave the guy a chance, but anyway. But yeah, this is a very, um, it was the worst for me. And I, I made notes for this one. I looked at some of my notes. Okay, I'm just going to do a, a shameless plug from my um, journal. Okay. Yes, let's do a shameless <laughs> plug. Um, some of my, the worst things about this book for me, there was a lot of repetition, which I think she tried to use in a way of uh, unreliable character who, you know, suffer with anxiety and panic, panic attacks, but it just became too taxing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, She brought in too many freaking secondary characters that served no purpose. Yes. Um, And the ending felt really rushed. Um, And I know it was some other things, but those are some of the glaring things that I remember. Um, And like I said, her first book blew us out the pick out the box we were just like yes, yes we were, ma'am we were singing that book's praises all year long yeah so we was like okay darby mm-hmm. we see you let's try it again and then it was like womp womp and we tried i, yeah. I think we kind of texted each other like mm-hmm. <laughs> like Are honestly you feeling the rela- anything? nothing because yeah. honestly the relationship this main character had with her brother-in-law was very weird extremely it was very strange. <laughs> yeah, because at but, one point I was like, "Are they having an affair? Are they? Is she the? Yeah, it was. It was. It was like she was at the house cleaning up for him." Mm-hmm. And I was like, Mm-mm, "I don't know what kind of Stepford wife shit this is." But I know, and her husband. I mean, like the characters. I just could not feel any sympathy or empathy. Neither one towards any of those characters. I'm like. <laughs> is outrageous like and not in a good way yeah i'm like y'all weird yeah it's weird very weird <laughs> so yeah i'm with you there even like too weird for a book weird it's just like yeah mm, okay it just didn't hit but i think that was another one that well the ratings aren't as high and a lot of i was surprised that being that her birth first book was so popular the replacement wife maybe people heard that it wasn't that good because there's not even 12,000 ratings on that mug, which shocks me. Yeah, I think so. Because like some of the people that I've, you know, when you go into Goodreads and you like a book or read it, you see what your other friends are saying. And a lot of people were like, this is a big disappointment after um, The Perfect Wife. Is that what it was? Pretty Little Wife. Pretty was Little it? Wife. Yeah. Okay. It was it was a wife thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yeah, this was... You know, um, sophomore slump, uh, flop, yeah. sophomore flop. Definitely. We'll see if she yeah. can rebound with book three. Come I'm on, Miss so Kane. I know. Let's do it. Come on. We got faith yes. in you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Should we flip the script and look at our best reads of the year? Yeah. Let's go ahead. Okay. We'll flip it. Flip the script and then okay. we'll, uh, after that, we'll take a break and then we'll come back to more 
disappointments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess um okay, so I must say I had no five star reads this year in the buddy read list. None. Neither did I. So I couldn't even just say, oh, easily this book, because it was the only five. I had none. So I had to look at my four stars and try to figure out which one I enjoyed more. Yeah. So it was hard. I'm not even going to lie. I think they're almost tied, but I'm going to say Ace of Spades by Ferreta Abike. Yemide, Lord, y'all know me in names. Good God, I'm sorry. I think you did good with this one. Okay. <laughs> so I thought that was very interesting to me. You know, I know it's a academic academia, dark academia story, you know, that type of thing with a, a twist of social realism and you know that kind of stuff going on and but I just really enjoyed it we even broke down like some of the artwork we like really got into that book so and I listened to some of the music behind that so I just remember all the the vibes that I was getting from that so I think that was my favorite of the year okay did you oh I think did you have more than one or are you gonna let me go you can go, and then I have another one that I think was pretty much tied with that. Tied with that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my favorite would be um, Razor, B- Razor Blade Tears by mm-hmm. S.A. Cosby. Um, it was, again, another fast-paced S.A. Cosby book, that dynamic between the two fathers and the, the secret at the end and um, how he brought in... You know, it was two fathers whose uh, gay sons were married and were murdered. And um, I just love the dynamic of it. The dynamic of these two fathers trying to get, trying to find the killers of their son, along with trying to um, get away from the killers (laughs) as they, you know, navigate this story and then learning about themselves as men and what they their regrets um, of not loving their their kids Sons, for yeah. who they were. Um, and SA got really deep into male toxicity and um, yeah, it was just it was just layers to that story. So that was that was he one had some of my learning favorite. moments in there. Yeah, he did. He did. He brought mm-hmm. it in, and he and you know he didn't make it mushy mushy. You mm-hmm. know he still tried to make it like I'm still tough tough. You know like that man. You know how men like I'm tough. I don't want to cry, but he he still broke it down. So yeah, that was <laughs> the main the main father, the black father. All I could think is he is like the black version of Liam Neeson in those movies. Like he all this dirt going around kicking people's butts. <laughs> Like, <laughs> what was that? Liam Neeson was that Taken? Yes, the Taken stuff. I'm like, get yeah. out of here! You ain't doing all that, but okay. <laughs> I know, I know. But you know, he was um, he was a criminal, right? Yeah, he yeah, was he like was a criminal. Yeah, he, he was a criminal. But yeah, so that was one of my favorites, and that was my second time reading it um, with you. And I had begun to even see more, you know, little things that I had missed the first time. So, okay. um, so yeah. That was my fave. That was a good one. That, you know, that was on my four star list. But yeah, it was a good one. I agree. Good pick. Um, So my next one, which was unexpected. I did not think I would like this one, but I did. The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. I really liked that book. Yeah, that was that was. That was mine too. <laughs> was it? <laughs> it was. It was something about that snowstorm. It was mm-hmm. something about um I don't know. It was it was I liked the setting. I liked the way the build up, the um the time um uh, she did some time jumping in there mm-hmm. too. Um she got me with a few um twists that I didn't catch. Um um, figuring try- out that Wiley was the the child. Yeah. Like, it was- oh my god. <laughs> yes. And you and I didn't do this book together. No. Um, I was on high. 
I was on hiatus yeah. <laughs> during that time, but I enjoy reading that book. That was one of my four star books too. I was just like, cause at one point I was just like, I felt like I was like this, like, come on, come on. Yeah. You know, especially with the little boy girl um, yes. you know, in the snowstorm. And, and I was yelling at the book, like, why the fuck did you leave homeboy in the barn? It's freezing. You know, those kind of things. And when you're talking back to the book. Yeah. That's like a lot. Back to the TV. Yeah. So yeah, that was one of my that was uh, one of my best ones too this year. I just also love that the little child became the hero. Like the child is the hero. <laughs> I know we we really do get we really do like little kick ass heroes, don't yes, we? Yes, <laughs> we do. We really do. Yeah. Um, so that was your second one, huh? Uh mm-hmm. huh. Okay. Yes, it was. It was my second one. So we had two that we matched up on so far. Yeah, that's, yes, I love when that happens. (laughs) All right, so let's take a quick break, you guys. Let's check out these commercials by listening to those you are supporting the podcast. And don't forget, you can hop on over and get the book review journal that Classy was mentioning earlier. It's available right now on Amazon. It's gorgeous. And uh, you can get it in only two days on Amazon. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, so yeah, check those out. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are going to continue our best and worst of 2022 with a couple of um I guess special appearances <laughs> so the first one is let's start with the negative again our biggest disappointment of the year okay I feel like we already started on this one but the replacement wife yeah again because just had so many high hopes for Darby again like we said we had read a uh, pretty little wife and was just looking forward to another um you know just that twist of what is she going to do next and um i think like with pretty little wife this wife was a kick ass um, wife who wasn't taking any shit and I think with the replacement right. wife we were just like how did she get this mousy little how did she go from pretty little wife who was always one step ahead of everybody else yes. to this mousy broad okay I'm sorry I said it yes I said it yes she, she was mousy she was and I was just like oh. because my little my pretty uh pretty little wife was so bold it was so bold in the actions of the main character like the very like first chapter she's yeah. like yeah i killed my husband so yeah, <laughs> like, you know? yeah. and not only that, that like at first like it, when, i think even when we flip back into the story she was also kind of like the trophy wife mm-hmm. but she presented herself like that because she needed to but in the meantime yes. she's like i already know what your brother and you are doing yes so I'll play this game, mm-hmm. but I'm already one step, make that two, maybe even three steps ahead of you guys. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why, yeah, it was a big disappointment because, man, in case you guys didn't know, go check out <laughs> Pretty Little yeah, Wife by Darby rec- King. We, we recommend Five Star yeah. Read. We recommend. Mm-hmm. We, and check out that podcast, too. We had a yeah. really fun time talking about yeah. that book. Yeah. If you listen to both of those podcasts <laughs> back to back, you're going to be like, whoa. <laughs> Is this the same author? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I get it. I get that they try and switch things up, but it's just like, hmm. And yes. it felt rushed. It really did. It felt rushed at, at points, too. So. Absolutely. It it was rushed. Um. So I want to say, you know, if I had to put like another one in second place on that. It wasn't a two star. I would actually pass over things we do in the dark to say the last thing he told me by Laura Dave. I rated that three stars, but that was a pretty disappointing book to me. Yeah, it was. It was, 
And I can't remember why I gave it a three now that we talk about it. Yeah, I when I think back, all I think back to is, ew, that wasn't good. So something about it made me give it a three at the time, but it's beyond me now. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, that says a lot when you can't remember anything about the book. You're just like, mm. Yeah, this was a Reese Witherspoon book club, book of the uh, month, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think. Yeah, I, I just remember the daughter was like so annoying, the daughter in high school. Mm -hmm. And the stepmother is trying to help her, trying to protect her. And she off like, screw what you talking about. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> I'm like, you brat. Yeah. We but that's a, that's a, a brat who doesn't like her oh, stepmother. My yeah. God. She did that well. But yeah. I think the things with the, um, the father and the secrets and them going back, the trying to figure out. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And the motivations for the main character were very weak. Because, like, why are you doing this? Like, mm -hmm. why? And some and of the choice, yeah, the choices she makes as well. Like, I remember us having a whole long conversation about why she handled the money, the cash in the manner that she did versus yeah. sending her friend for the money. Like, this character makes some dumb choices, in my opinion. Because didn't she hide it under the sink or she something? She hid it, yeah. And then I think she told the officer, the, officer, the detective. Yeah. Because he and said, like, oh, if you get this money, you can go into, uh, you know, protective, you know, witness, protect, protection. witness protection with this money. But if you don't tell us, you know, he like kind of threatened her about it. And then she just gives it up. And the thing was, is that at that point, I don't even think she knew if he really was a detective or an FBI or whatever. And that's what I was struggling with. Like, you haven't even confirmed mm -mm. if he is who he is. And you up there telling. And I'm thinking to myself, if I'm in that kind of situation, I'm only trusting my best friend and maybe one of, you know, those type of people. But somebody I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she did make some questionable questionable decisions. Um and then I, you know, I struggled too, like with the husband and his choices. And I mean, granted it, grant once, you know, we got to the end of the story, it's still kind of like but do in the middle of the day, you just, <laughs> at, just go at school, in. you just Right. And didn't tell me shit. I know. I mean, you know honestly, this little girl who don't like me. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Told this little girl that doesn't like me about some money, blah, blah, blah. And now we're supposed to forge this relationship. I, you know. See, I feel like if it were, we just needed some more things added to make it more believable. Make me buy this story. You know, it's fiction, obviously, but maybe buy it. Like, yeah. maybe if the husband had confessed to something and then yeah, making her want to protect the girl, right? Yeah. Besides her her just possibly going to be her stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew, like, I did feel like her husband knew that she loved her stepdaughter and would do anything for her. I did. I That I did believe. And she was trying to forge a relationship with her. But the dad, like you were saying, his choices and just like, you know, dropping the bag off with the daughter and, and giving her all the info. Like what? Why is she? Right. She, for, yeah. What if she didn't tell stepmom? I know. Yeah. <laughs> what a mess. <sighs> the whole story just didn't make, it just didn't. Jive. Click. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, some things just, it wasn't, the math wasn't mathing, it wasn't connect. it was some, yeah. Yeah, and then like their adventure in the church, mm -hmm. her trying to remember as a kid of a wedding. It, yeah, it was all some, yeah. It was all murky. Why did we give it a three now? <laughs> I know, I don't know. I w I'd have to go back and listen to that podcast to figure out what we actually liked about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even, don't you dare go back. No, don't I'm waste. not. I'm, I'm saying. done. Okay. I you do done. not, you can't get that time back. No. I know. It's gone. Yeah. Um. All right. So what about the biggest surprise? Did we have any huge surprises in our reading this year? 
Yes, I ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. The arrangement. The arrangement, yes. The yes, the arrangement. Atonement. Yes, there Kirsten we go. Kirsten Mockley. All three. I know. That was a big surprise. Man. <laughs> and Very. the funny thing is, those are fun, fast-moving Interesting to talk about books, but they still didn't get five stars. They got four. <laughs> no, no, because I mean, she was over the top, and you know, she had some issues because they were some of the stuff was just like really, but I was here for it. That was yeah, just, yeah, but fun. it was a total surprise. This was an unknown author to us, um, indie author. Um, I think the ratings were high. I can't remember, but it was just one of those things like when we were picking books for the quarter and I was like, I've heard about this one. Let's try mm-hmm. it. And you're like, okay, let's try it. And who would have thought, because we didn't realize when we, when we decided to pick this book that it was in a series, not at no. all. I had no idea. And then when we got to the end, we're just like, what? I want to read the second one. <laughs> I know. I got to know what happens. <laughs> I was so- like, I don't know about you. But I'm going to read the second one. <laughs> exactly. So that yeah. is how both of the final books, The Amendment and The Atonement, got picked up for December. So we squashed our December plan to finish this little trilogy out. And it was worth it. Worth it. It was, man. Because it's, it was a novella. And like we were saying, th- even two of the books would have been the time of a, a whole book or all three, it would have been just a big ass book, but it was so fast paced, paced that we were just like, oh, we can get, we can knock this out in an instant. And then yeah. when we got over to book clubs, <laughs> that sealed the deal when we got to book clubs. Everybody wanted to continue. And actually, yeah. one person in the group had already started the next <laughs> book. Yeah, it's like, oh. and what's cool about like not letting us know any spoilers? She was just like, uh huh, yeah. <laughs> and she never said that she had started it. No. Nope. Then I don't know what it was that she said, and we were like, "You started the book," and she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> "Yeah, she did a good job of not yeah. really get showing her cards." Yes, yes, but. it was fun. It it was a wild ride. I don't know. I recommend it. Like I was. was texting my friends and I'm like if you need in your year with something just fun you know wild ride do this this is yeah. binge worthy this is you, like you binge watch uh, a Netflix series mm-hmm. this right here is binge worthy absolutely it's kind of like a a nice little treat right like you're not it's really easy to consume very easy yeah it's like wow so fun <laughs> yeah to the point where because it was one of those books that because you know how some books you'll put down and you be like oh, i'll get back to it i'll mm-hmm. get back to it. one of these is like no i need to know like if i was in the car or i had to go run errands i could not wait to put it on in the car um when i was cooking when i was cleaning it walking the you know anytime i was trying to finish this because i wanted to know what happened next Mm -hmm. and i know we had discussed and you were like oh this could have been you know maybe one big book but after we chatted about it it couldn't have been because the way kirsten writes these books she i won't call her the queen of of cliffhangers because i haven't read like a whole bunch of other people in cliffhangers but she does a fantastic job of cliffhangers um, and I don't think if it was one full book that it would have had the same dynamic because, you know, you would have just moved on to the next chapter. Right. But with her books, it's like you have to let it settle in what you just read. Yes. Like the main character, Ainsley, like I think about, did you ever watch that show Revenge on ABC? Loved revenge. Loved That's how it. I think of Ainsley. Like if I ever needed revenge on somebody, because she can think so many steps ahead. Yeah. There's like no way you you cannot best her. <laughs> yeah, and just when you think you know something, mm-hmm. you're just like, God dang it, I didn't see that one. Like when she had time to do that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, Kirsten has some stuff up her sleeve, man. Yes. 
Yeah. And I've looked at some of her other books, like, I'm like, ooh, what should I try next? Hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I've looked yeah. at a few of them. All right. Well, let me know what you go for next. Uh, I might I think, check it out. I think I'm going for the mother-in-law, but I'm not positive. The mother-in-law. Yeah. I've ha- I've seen some mixed reviews. Some people are like, yeah, this wasn't for me. But I think these are the kind of same people that were like, didn't like the amendment either. Uh, it was just too much. So, um, but yeah, that was a pleasant surprise for the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. We needed that. Because like we said, you know, this wasn't the best reading year ever. So it was a pleasant, happy surprise to get something that's, energized us at the end there yeah Mm-hmm. yes so i guess i kind of do want to mention one more book it didn't necessarily fall under like the surprise in the way that kristen moglin's books did but i was surprised how and this only got a three-star rating so but it surprised me that i actually got such a good conversation out of this when i looked at the cover art I did judge a book by the cover art. I looked at this cover art and I'm like, there is no way I'm going to like this book. It looks boring. We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. Yeah, it was. It was, it was very blah, like yellow and something. And it was like fields. But when you got into it again, we have a very strong young character in this book. Yeah. Acting wild. (laughs) Doing the most. I'm I'm an outlaw. Exactly. And I feel like we had such a good conversation about that book. I want to label this like the best conversation. I don't know. I feel like we got a really good conversation out of this book. And I enjoyed it, even though I stand by the three-star rating. It it wasn't, you know, something I I would normally pick up. I think this is one of those books too, where we were talking about the label of uh, genre. I think, Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of one of those ones where the genre was not right. Cause Mm -hmm. I think it may have been more true crime versus definitely crime. Yeah. But it was, it was and many of our three stars were good conversation pieces because you know, the, um, the, the relationship of, you know, the characters and, he did a lot of um, his character development mm-hmm. was was awesome. That I will say, but it was it was just I think it was just something like mm, it wasn't what I was expecting. But it was it was a slow burn. It was a slow burn, and it's like it took a lot to get to those nuggets. But those nuggets were so funny, yeah, so fun. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. When we got um, to it, it's just like, ooh, yeah, okay. So I guess that's kind of an honorable mention in that category. But again, I am in no rush, absolutely no rush to read anything else by Chris Whitaker. Mm -mm. I feel like that was a one and done. Thank you. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. But I did like the, the, again, another little girl who um, bucked the system, basically. Mm -hmm. She totally bucked the system. Yes. And she was a little brat, too. I know. And she did make some questionable decisions as well. But I, I cr- blame that because she's a child. <laughs> she's mm-hmm. a child. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and children and she don't was always trying think. To pre- no. And she was trying to protect herself. And she, and I mean, she lived a rough life. Yeah. Yeah. So she was just, she was trying to do what she thought was best. And she did some harm. <laughs> she did. She did some harm on her way. Yeah. She did. She did some harm to her little brother. She yeah. tried, but you know. And another, and, and what, to another character, uh, one of her foster parents, remember? She blamed him for. Yes, she yeah. did. She said her foster parent did something that they he did not do. Yeah. She was really evil to her granddaddy. Yeah. Uh, she was really mean to the boy next door. <laughs> she, you know, the little boy that liked her. She was just a mean person, but you know. <laughs> But she had a tough exterior. I mean, you know, she was she was basically the mother to her mother. Mm -hmm. She you have what she was like ten or eleven, no more than twelve, if that. Mothering a um, was a mother addict. She was definitely. I don't know. She had a problem. I don't remember what it was, but I know she liked men who were a little abusive and stuff so hmm. and she couldn't keep a steady job and there Mm -hmm. were times where they weren't fed 
Um, but there was a, you know, yeah. So she was, she was a, she was a mother to her mother and to her little brother. So, but yeah, that was a great honorable mention. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Mark that down. Mark that down for next year, ma'am. <laughs> okay, I will. Add that to the list. <laughs> yes, I will. Do you have yeah. any others you want to talk about before we? Um, I think that was probably it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I liked Ace of Spades as well, but yeah, other than that, like you said, this was a meh. Um, but some of our best conversations were our three book, our three star books. Um, yeah. Not some of the best. I mean, we had those fours. But the threes, even though we go with three, we wouldn't recommend our conversations about the book were wonderful. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, good stuff. So, you know, you guys let us know if you've been reading with us this year or you've read some of the books that we've read this year on the Buddy Reads feature. Let us know what were your best and worst, your biggest disappointments your greatest surprise and like anything else that you feel like you want to share, you can find us in shelf addiction official and on the book clubs app and on social media. You got the links below, but before we go, we do want to just let you know that we're going to kick off 2023 with the book we were going to read in December. <laughs> so we are going to read a, and I'm, I'm kind of scared again. I'm scared again because we read Samantha Downing before and absolutely enjoyed her. Yeah. So we are going to read. It's been a while, too. It's been a while. What, maybe that was a 2019 book. Yeah. But you've read something of hers, right? In between or no? No. Uh, yeah, I did. I did, actually, now that I think about it. And it wasn't as good as the first one. Yeah. And I think, and I, I brought that up because I know when we were moving to this, that was part of your your decision. Like I'm, I'm kind of weary because that one I read, and I didn't even read it because of your mm -hmm. your reaction or your rating. Because I'm like you and I are we're pretty even keel when it comes to you know every once in a while there's something that we don't um, line up with. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we'll see. But we're gonna start with for your own good. You know, it's another academia type environment um mm. so let's see what it says uh i think it's about a professor or something yeah a teacher he won teacher of the year uh, uh, uh. the death of a school parent dun, dun, dun. Mm. oh my gosh it's really too bad that sometimes excellence can come at such a high cost Hmm. Okay. Sound like a crazy teacher, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Excellent. High cost. Dead parent. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm, here's the hope in 2023. <laughs> it's a good reading year. Come on, book gods. I know. Give us all the good luck with picking these books <laughs> for next year. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we're done. What do you think, Classy? I think we are. We talked about some good ones today. Yes, we did. Okay. It's been a blast, you guys. Oh, hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year. And we'll see you in 2023. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.